Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2016. Brought to you by Informatica. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hello and welcome back to theCUBE. You're watching exclusive coverage of Informatica World 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media, the, it's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, your host with my co-host and head of research at SiliconANGLE Media and GM of Wikibon Research, Peter Burris. Our next guest is Mavis Gar Gerlinghouse, who's the System Director of Business Intelligence at Citrus Health. Welcome, Crisis Health. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, 34 years you've been there. You've seen I have. the movies over and over. It's like, was it Groundhog's Day up until what point? I mean, tell us what your environment's like at, uh, at, your, at your office. So, um, I, you know, actually I'll start with a funny story. Um, <laughs> when I first started working there, I was on a typewriter. Um, so if you think about how times have changed and today, you know, we're doing computing with, it, with Informatica, with Teradata and all of the, the large technologies. It, you know, healthcare itself has come a long way in embracing the technologies that truly make a difference to be able to get the analytics to where it needs to be. But we're still using QWERTY keyboards. <laughs> That's very true, yes. So that was very the days when you had to ship boxes out and call a document record company. Absolutely. They'd shuttle it back out yes. and the patients lying on the yes. table. All yes. this healthcare is being done manually. Absolutely. And then and of course, the mini computers come in, the rest is history. Yeah. So I got to ask you, what were some of the seminal moments in your career where you saw the inflection point, where data started to really take root? And, and share with us some of the notable surprises that made you take notice of that. I, I think the f one of the ones was when I was working at a f just a single facility within Christus and um, the requests that started coming in from the various executive team members. Um, you know, a lot of times they just wanted to see financial data. They just wanted to see, you know, how their world was doing. And then all of a sudden, people started asking the questions of trying to correlate between financial and clinical. Um, when you start seeing things like that, it's like, ah, people are starting to think differently about data. And so, and it grew from there. I think that when, now- When was that? That was probably um, about, I would say around 15 years ago. And you know, you start really, these questions start coming up. And so actually, to be honest with you, that was what brought me into IT, was just the, the, the ability and the thought that, you know, the more technology and embracing technology to get the data to where it needs to be. I've always been a data geek. I've, that's what I've enjoyed being around because to me it tells the story. Um, it is, you know, that if you really want to know an answer to something, if you get enough data, you can truly get that answer. Um, and as, then as with the journey kept going and going until finally, you know, working now with the CMIOs of the organization and really getting those complex questions such as, okay, we're implementing computerized physician order entry. Will it make a difference in the way patients are cared for? Um, you know, we actually did a program for that. We actually went and collected the data and we found that it makes a difference. And so those are the things that's exciting to me to be able to to know that you're a part of actually changing the face of healthcare because of the data. I mean, I think MD Anderson's another good example of using data to truly make a difference in a patient's life, but even you don't have to cure cancer to make that difference. You can make it in a lot of other ways. So uh, you mentioned prior went on, the biggest surprise was you know, when you started seeing the data explosion mm -hmm. over the years, now you're seeing data at the center of the value proposition. Right. Um, talk about how that's changed efficiency but also innovation where you can really get better care. So efficiency obviously assumes some, some better patient care outcomes, but more importantly, that can be mostly bottom line and more efficiency with care. But what other things on the innovation side where you saw the data drive patient care and outcome? Absolutely, I think on the um, efficiency side, just quickly, you know, being able to write an order that was illegible by, from a physician to going to where that physician is actually entering the order, he knows it's accurate, there's no middleman, it goes directly in the system and the, and the care is given. I think that is, from an efficiency perspective, that's one of the, the biggest things that's happened in healthcare on our side with just that whole physician-patient care. Um, when you think about some of the other things that we are or seeing is the, you know, I think the internet of things is going to change because now how many of, you know, everybody's wearing Fitbits, they're all collecting their data and I think that as you start looking at population management, which is where really healthcare is going, um, all those data points and being able to collect them and bring them together is going to be so critical because it's all part of that patient story. It's all part of how that patient will either go for care or need care 
that they may not even need today, know so, they need today. So proactive, Absolutely. preventative kind Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely, yes. Versus stockpiling the old metaphor of the emergency rooms are packed up with flu patients right. kind of thing. Right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It also leads to uh, presumably uh, less invasive or lower cost forms of research right. where you can actually collect an enormous amount of data across a lot of different behaviors yes. and a lot of different tendencies right. and use that to discover and then roll out and broadly diffuse new treatments. Right. Because at the end of the day, the goal is not the physician, it's the goal it's is all the about wellness the and the patient yeah, health. So, patient. at what point in time are, or are you already starting to see a demand to start bringing not only patient data in, but also create services out of big data that goes to the patients and advises them about things that they can do? Is that starting to happen? Uh, to, some, to some degree. I mean, we are really starting to do more and more population health management, which is exactly that. You know, I think the, the challenge you have is getting all the data together. Um, it's not just from one EMR. It's not from um, a couple of EMRs. If the, they go to a pharmacy, you need that data. If they go down the street to a different place, you need that data. And so bringing it all together and getting the picture of that patient, then yes, absolutely starting to organize that data in a manner that a nurse or a coordinator can call that patient and start helping them through their disease management um, or managing any of their other conditions that they, that they have. One minute, so here's, a, here's an interesting, let me tell you if you foresee this at, happening at some point in time, we talk a lot about big data being used as, you know, or geolocation data mm -hmm. being used to make offers as people are driving down the roads and saying, oh, fast food restaurant. Right. At what point in time do you think healthcare providers will then send compensating messages and say, don't go eat at that restaurant because it's oh, bad for good. your health? Well, that's an interesting concept. I haven't had, I haven't heard that, but that is, um, I mean, if you're really starting to try to manage, I, you know, maybe one day. I think people, though, want to make their choices. I think that'll be a really tough sell. Informed choices. Yes. And I presume that part of the job that you foresee for the for Christus and others to pursue is to provide those options that right. really will help them understand what their choices are and what the outcomes are likely to be. Absolutely. And I mean, we have seen programs where we've worked with restaurants and graded their, their food heart healthy um, to where they can have those informed choices. Um, I think the calories on the, the menus and things help, a pa help patients as well. But absolutely, I mean, and when we start really managing their care, absolutely, you're going to want to inform them of places and things that they should either stay away from. I'm not sure about messaging, but I could see that happening. <laughs> well, one of the things that's interesting, John, is that we've talked a lot today about the uh, about moving from uh, in, uh, you know early adopters to mainstream, and the healthcare business is interesting mm -hmm. because the healthcare business made a run at expert systems, which was in certain respects uh, one, of the one of the original forms of big data. Mm -hmm. We didn't quite get there, whether it was the technology or whether it was the, whether it was the doctors and physicians didn't want to adopt it or whatever else it was. How, are, how is this round of effort learning from that previous set of uh, attempts uh, and making it likely that this round is going to be more successful in healthcare? To, in my mind, I think it's that you look around and the other industries have been successful. And I think there's a lot more success stories today than what they were when, we, when that first round happened. I also think the tool sets have matured. I mean, you know, master data management alone has brought a lot of very, you know, technology advancements to where we can manage data and normalize it. I mean, I, today in our organization, we're actually normalizing our data before it goes out to third parties. We would have never thought about that 10 years ago. I mean, it just wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have had a way to do it. So when you think about the tools such that Informatica brings, it provides the, the, that tool set that you need to be able to be successful instead of having to build it all from your own and then everybody builds it differently. That's the other piece that we've struggled with is everybody's done it differently. And so to really be successful, you're going to have to have those standards and ways of connecting that you honestly know that data that comes in is, is actually being mirrored with like data and it's not that garbage in, garbage out concept. And data that goes out is under control. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I got to ask you on that thread because you brought up a good point. A lot of things you're seeing 10 years ago, you might, or 10 years ago, you didn't foresee today. I got to ask you about, um, we talked about uh, HIPAA, Y2K. Those were our seminal moments in healthcare 
in general because they were like one. One was doom and gloom, right. and one was obviously right. regulation. But ransomware is big right now. I want to get your, you mentioned that previously before we came on the air. The new tactic is to target healthcare right. providers and IT folks because they kind of have the security and regulatory data that's sensitive, Absolutely. and yet there's a huge orchestrated effort for attacking and then holding you hostage. Right. How are you guys, one, are you aware of that? And, Absolutely. And how are you preparing for it? And not that I want to share all the secrets of how you're protecting yourself, but that's something that's on everyone's mind that's what looks like the biggest Y2K-like problem right. on everybody these days. Absolutely. Specifically healthcare. It is, and it's, you know, it's really, um, and yes, we are preparing for it. Um, you know, I think that you never want to think about it happening to you, but we all know that there's no, no matter how many precautions that you take, there's always that risk. Um, for us, the thing is to have a plan and to be able to um, address it quickly and do what we need to do to try to mitigate as quickly as possible. Yeah. And I think that's really all you can do. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's unfortunate when you see the incidents that are occurring today, but especially when you think about it being patient data, but it is, it is happening and I think to put your, your head in the sand and say it'll never happen to me or we're, we're too strong well, we to do, it. absolutely, is the wrong yeah. thing to do. And our CISO you know, says, uh, you know, we'll do as much as we can, but the thing is you have to be prepared in case it happens to also, you. Also they target people, the weaker ones too, that aren't prepared. So right. the ones that put their head in the sand actually make themselves more vulnerable right. to the ransomware. Do yeah. you actually practice your responses to those types so that you're not, you know, you're trying to mitigate the threat, but you're trying right. to especially focus on mitigating the damage. Yes. Do you practice response across the corporation, across the group, so that you can, uh, so that the right people are making the right decisions at the right time? Yes, and as we are, and in fact right now we're, we're in our final stages of putting our plan together, uh, and one of the pieces that we will do is a dry run, in which we always do for disaster recovery. Um, we practice, exactly. absolutely, because just because you have a role to play within when something happens, if you don't go through that role, it's hard to know that you really will know what to do if the day happens, and so we will, we do actually do that. And the basic systems, or not basic, are the systems that you're putting together for analytics, is that going to inform that process? Um, it doesn't today, not saying that it won't in the future but we, we do have different tool sets and we are yeah. trying to bring a lot of things together, but that has um, not been something that we have put on the radar just yet, but I, I feel like in the future it probably yeah. will they be. They always say be ready for it, assume security breaches, the ones that assume it are going to be more prepared mm -hmm. and avoid it. Absolutely. Uh, I got to ask you about the, the dollar savings, and you know, this kind of gets into a, more of the cost savings, but again, reduction of cost is a big part of some it of the is. efficiencies you get with you know, managing all the different data and there's a lot of redundancies, as well as providing the care and the outcomes. But what specifically can you share about some of the savings you guys had operationally? I know there was some talk about over a million dollars in savings, mm -hmm. and also any improvements on contract management areas, such as uh, managing vendors and managing relationships? Absolutely. Um, and so when we first started our, our journey, we had data about suppliers and supplies in multiple systems um, to be able to manage to even know, you know, obviously lots of different spellings, uh, vendor names, and so it was really hard to bring it all together to really see what you had at the end of the day. And so we, when we started our, our program, it was to bring together all that data within Informatica, within MDM, and so what, it, what we actually started seeing and measuring was any time we paid late charges um, and really starting to manage that, watching the, the trends and the data. And so we found some things like contracts that there was absolutely no way we could ever pay it on time. And so you know, we went back and renegotiated. Um, the amount of labor that it took to manage all these Excel spreadsheets, um, you know, one of the individuals shared that it used to it was hours and sometimes days and now it's the click of a button. Um, so, you know, those are the things that we really realized um, early on with this program, and I think that we continue to see value in it um, as we have, you know, the better you can bring your data together and look the trends, it's the, that's really what brings the value. What's the coolest thing you've seen happen with data that you could share, that you could put the audience? It could be something crazy, it could be something really critical, it could be something medical, something personal. What have you seen in, the, in your work environment where you go, oh my God, data and made that happen? That's a really good question. Um, I see a lot of amazing things, but I, to me, it's, um, I saw a program once that actually was alert on sepsis with patients that walked in the door. I mean, everybody knows that sepsis is one of the things that we're, we're all trying to battle against. 
And um, the application actually took the data real time as it was coming from lab, from vitals, and it would actually send an alert that that patient was potential septic. And to me, that's what's amazing about healthcare and that's what's amazing, amazing about data. Because, because the real time nature of the data absolutely had a direct impact to the saves lives. lives. Saves lives. And to me, that's what it's all about. I mean, financially, yes, it's great. We have to yeah. make money to keep our doors open. But when you can honestly say that you saved a patient's life because of the data and the, the way that you've set up technology, to me is just bottom line, the best thing that you can, or, can do or in a day. Or their suffering. Absolutely, or, yeah, yes. You know, and look, is, healthcare is a, it's a community thing. It and is. being able to draw upon the insights of other patients, the insights of other physicians, the insights of you know, nursing staff and the people right. who are actually providing the care and rolling that all together into something that can help the patient, the patient's family, since the family's crucial to the overall uh, uh, direction that healthcare takes. Mm -hmm. Again, it comes back to this notion of at what point in time does your hospital become distinguished by the data services Very it true. provides as much as the in-hospital care? Yep, that is so true. And I, I do think that you will start seeing that. It, the, you know, it's when I first started this journey, I, when I went to um, conferences, I, I didn't see a whole lot of healthcare. Now you're seeing more yeah. and more healthcare. Um, you know, I don't know how many calls I've had over the last three to five years talking with people that are asking about our journey and where, what we've done. Yeah. And it, it's it's exciting to talk about it because it's not that I want to be the only one. I want everybody to do this because who knows, yeah. one day me or my family may be in their facility yeah, and, and, and that's that's what's important. And the compute power is also applying compute power and algorithms to new things that have never been battled that's before. Right. You're seeing that's right. the genome, the cancer. Mm -hmm. So I want you to share, this is really a great story. I love that story, saving lives is great. For the folks that are watching that are in healthcare that want to save lives, that have the passion that you do, what advice would you give them around their environment, what they could do to, to help, um, what they could do in their company, how they can interact, what they could do to advocate for certain policies or things that you've seen that works? What or would you solving share? certain problems, where would you start? What would you, what would you share those folks? I think the first thing that you have to ask is, what is what do we want to solve? You have to have a business case. And I think that if you can put a good business case together around saving lives and then going and trying to sit down and talk with those individuals who have the power to make those decisions. Um, not going to say every time that you go, you're going to get a yes, but I think you keep going back. And if you're in the position to actually choose systems or to make decisions around data, the question I would ask is how can you not move forward with something like this, knowing that it will make such a big impact on the patients that walk through your door every day? I, I mean, I just don't understand. To me, this is a no-brainer because yeah. you can either continue to focus on the financial side of it only or truly embrace the fact that data is going to make a difference in, in how care is given eventually how we are paid, and if you're not prepared for that, you're just, it's going to be hard to survive in this market. Yeah, and, and, the, and the market will go move around you. Now, thanks so much for sharing you're your welcome. awesome insight, your enthusiasm, your passion. Thank you. And saving lives is a wonderful thing, and congratulations on your journey. Thanks. And thanks for sharing that with us here on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're watching theCUBE here live at Informatica World 2016. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. You're watching theCUBE, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Chris Devaney from Data.